Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to my week 31 reading wrap up which is mostly going to focus on books that I read during the Romance Takeover Readathon um, which is technically ending the day that you're seeing this but I finished all of my prompts. I'm very excited. I blacked out my bingo board and also I just it felt so good to read so many books in a week again. It's been so long so even though they weren't all winners and uh, we do have some rants to get through it was overall a wonderful experience this is the third time I've participated slash um, hosted slash created this readathon um, it's been uh, a great time every time it's been absolutely fabulous so I'm so excited to go over these books with you I'm always so excited but first off before we dive into this wrap up I want to say a big Thank you to Johnny B, who is a new patron of the Book Refuge. If you are interested in supporting my channel and helping me keep doing this full time, it has been over three months now and I am absolutely stunned every single day that I wake up and get to do this. One day I'll be used to it, but it's still not today. I still feel like I'm skipping out on something when I'm not going in. And it's people like you, Johnny, who helped me be able to do that. So I appreciate it so much. Um, if you'd like to support me, go ahead and check out my links down below under the support me section. There are a few different options that keep me going here. Whether it's keeping me with caffeine, there's an option to support me through Kofi down there, or if you just want to become a monthly subscriber or supporter, there's that. Or you can just go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I'm getting so close to hitting 15K. I'm so excited about it. Um, and watching the video and liking it, that's how putting money in the bank too, and you don't have to do anything extra. So thank you so much. All right, let us go in because we have 13 books to talk about. And the first two don't have to do with the readathon at all. They are books that I um, was squeezing in last Sunday before the readathon started. So if you don't know if you're new here, I have my Chromebook that has my notes. I take um, notes on every book so that I can do these weekly wrap ups. So when I'm looking down, it's that. It's not because I have a Twitch, although I do that too. I look off to the right. And people ask me, why can't you just look at me? And I'm like, because it's not about you. It's about me talking about books. And if you need me to look into your eyes, maybe you need a therapist. So anyway. All right, here we go. The first book that I read in August, actually, because this is the full week of August reading here, we have Controlled Chaos by Lydia Michaels. This one was book five or I think it was book six six in the McCullough Mountain series. So this one was about Brayden and Becca. And I have skipped over Broken Man for the time being, although I'm not really reading these books in order. Anyway, I've been all over the place. Um, some of them have been available on NetGalley. Some of them have been available on like um, to get the audio because these books have been out for quite a few years. They actually used to have different names and McCullough Mountain got like rebranded and Lydia Michaels was providing arcs to get people reading them. And I've been taking advantage of it because her books aren't in KU nor are the audiobooks on any other platform besides like for purchase. So I've been taking advantage where I could find them for free because I really like her reading, but it's expensive. So anyway, Controlled Chaos is a a one night stand with a single parent. Um, and so we have Brayden, who is, you know, one of the McCullough boys. And he is an architect and he's currently working in a big city right now. And we have Becca, who has just recently got divorced from her husband, her ex husband now. And she has a, uh, I don't know how old he is off the top of my head now. He's like, six or seven and he has autism and he has it pretty severely so much so that it's been it was part of the reason why her marriage didn't work out because um, her and her husband it was difficult so right now they're sharing custody and her divorce is official and she goes out with her friend and they have a ladies night and they run into Brayden and her friend encourages her to ride him cowboy ride him cowgirl and they have a one night stand and it's hot and wonderful. And then it's one of those where they go into the office next day and she's, you know, dreaming about this hot night she had, but now it's back to business as usual, being a badass, you know, mom. And Brayden 
is there. And he's hurt because she had like snuck off without talking to him. When he went to the bathroom, she like ran and he wants to give her a hard time. And she doesn't want to explain to him like why there can't be anything. And so she really brushes him off. He's a bit like aggressive with really wanting to see her. And in a way, like it reminded me of Tristan Miles just a little bit because he's so persistent with it that he shows up at her house and this is not you know in the same kind of scenario as Tristan because having her son's hunter is his name his schedule messed with can really like it can send him into an episode it can be really bad and so this is really invasive for Brayden to just show up at her house but granted he doesn't know this she didn't tell him not that she needed to but he's there and he can tell there's something up with her kid <laughs> and instead of being a jerk about it, because he's absolutely not, he calls his sister-in-law, who works with um, kids with learning disabilities and other things, and he does some research. And then he tries again to reach out to Becca, and he shares the, re the work that he did, and uh, then asks to take her out and find out more. And so this begins their relationship. Now, I was really enjoying this. I always enjoy Lydia Michael's books and I love the amount of work she put in to, you know, explaining this version of autism that Hunter has and, you know, the struggles that Becca has as a single mom and the strain that this could be on a relationship. But something that was really tough about this book was the third act conflict. Because the third act conflict of this one is Becca's husband deciding he doesn't want to be done yet. Um, and Becca trying to do what's best for her son and very much pushing Brayden away in favor of giving her husband a second chance. And not because she still has feelings for her husband, but because she is such a sacrificial mother that she wants what's best for Hunter, even though this father hasn't been what's best for Hunter at all. So anyway, I won't give the whole story away. I still gave this four stars, but it was very tough to see how much Brayden was willing to do, how much his family was willing to do, and how much they loved her. And she was like, yeah, but his dad will be best. And it's like, so would a fucking mountain of people who want to love your son. So would they be best. But Anyway, I'm not a mother, and this is fictional, but anyway, it, there was still a lot of beautiful. So this was four stars, three on the spice scale. Then I got to read one of my anticipated books. I wouldn't call it a most anticipated book because I know that this author, when they are writing this series, they like to fuck with us. So I don't know if any of you have read the Victorian Decadence series by S.M. Love Eilette, a.k.a. Minerva Spencer, a.k.a. one of my most intriguing historical romance authors that not enough people have read. Like, it is a fucking crime. My wonderful ladies and lads who love reading innovative historicals, why enough people haven't picked up Minerva Spencer or S.M. LaViolette, I challenge you. I challenge you. This is me challenging you. Okay, however, the Victorian Decadent series, that's not going to be for everyone. Um, it's an erotic historical romance series. There are HEAs. There is a lot of kinkiness, dynamic play, um, there is a lot of free sexuality in the series. Like there is um, all different combinations of, of people and um, relationships in here. And there's also usually some pretty open situations or being willing to play, which I know won't be for everyone. That's why I'm saying like Minerva Spencer and her other like works like I think are more accessible. This is really for people who want to be made uncomfortable in certain like sexual dynamics but this one was fascinating because it is a bit of a beauty in the beast retelling our heroine i think is 22 she's not too old but she's supposed to have to marry this one guy as you do um and she also she's been a bit of a sexual deviant she's not really she's had sex a few times but the fact that she's done it at all has made her father call her horrible things and he's going to marry her off to this old creepy man. And if she doesn't do what he wants, he is going to put her twin brother, who has a diminished mental capacity, into an insane asylum. So that's what's being held over her head. So she's like, I guess I got to lock my pussy down and not 
have the free life I want because I need to look out for my brother, which is admirable. But when she goes to town to start getting ready for this wedding, she comes under the purview of our hero, Malcolm, who we get a prologue from his point of view of him with his wife and which I think her name was, shoot, what's his wife's name? I can't remember it, but it was his wife and his lover and him having this little menage moment together. Um, yes, he's, he's married to his wife who was older than him. She was like 10 years older than him and their lover and they would share their lover. And again, if you've read, this is book four in this series. So if you've read the other ones, like this doesn't even, so, like this doesn't surprise you at all. Um, and there's this horrible fire that happens in the beginning and we skip ahead for 16 years in time we skip way ahead um and we know that his wife died and we don't know what happened to his lover in the beginning we don't know what happened to the lover he just gone so i assumed that the lover died too but he didn't because and this we're putting this out in the open um so he owns some uh big shopping places you know it's a little bit like if you read marrying winterborn where he um, had like these mall, like these shopping centers or whatever it's called, like I'm using modern terms, but these shopping places with multiple stores in them. He has one of those in here <clears throat> and he also had, he's a voyeur. And so he has like, you know, there weren't cameras back then. <laughs> well, there were some, there were some, but I mean, not video cameras. Um, he has like different places in his shopping center where he can watch people and he sees this beautiful young woman come in and he's stunned by her and absolutely he's just like oh my god she's gorgeous and he wants to know about her and we discover that he was horribly scarred by this fire that happened like very disfigured um and so the only sexual experiences he has lately are with prostitutes or sex workers that he has come to see him and he usually blindfolds them because they don't want to look at him while he's fucking them but anyway he finds out about this woman and what he finds out makes her extremely intriguing to him because she happens to be the niece of his lover and that's part of the reason he was so attracted in the beginning so she is 20 years 20 years younger than him um, or like 19 or something like that. And yeah, so she is the niece of his lover who we find out couldn't stand to look at him after what happened to him and had abandoned him. So his wife died and the lover abandoned him. And so he also finds out that the father of this woman, who we already know is a creep, he had possibly something to do with said fire that killed his wife and ruined him. So he pulls the good old Beauty and the Beast move and takes the girl as collateral against the father. Um, and meanwhile, she gets brought into his home by force, but nothing really forcibly happens to her except the fact that he also has voyeur holes throughout his home. So he's able to watch her in her room um, and then be watched by him because she discovers these these hidden passageways in his home and every night she goes and watches him with the sex worker that he has hired and it's very interesting so that is a very interesting setup I realize that there is a love story in here there is one that happens however there wasn't a sex scene between the two of them until 70% into this book um, and this one was not as erotic to me as previous books in the series and I think that's okay because I still felt like very satisfied at the end of this book with how they got to their HEA because there is a mystery going on and there is definitely more to do with that lover than we think and there's also this character named Mr. Smith and we've seen him in previous books and we see him in this one and the next one which is coming in October is called his or their master and this is finally going to be Smith's book and I believe it's supposed to be a polyamorous relationship of course it will be um, and I'm very very excited for that I cannot overstate because Smith has been an interesting character this whole time okay we're 15 minutes in and I've talked about two books but that's okay because 
all the rest of the books were books I read in the readathon, so I'm not going to go too deep into these because, yeah, I'm going to promo my vlog because it's a freaking awesome vlog and it'll be going up tomorrow. It's available now for all of my channel members if you want to watch that. Um, so I'm just going to give kind of like brief overviews of these. And there are a couple. There's one I want to rant about and one I want to gush about. And the rest, we're going to go through them kind of quickly because I already have an hour long vlog diving deep into those and we don't need to do that today. So the first book that I read was Claimed by the Orc Prince. This was by Lionel Hart. And by the way, I just wanted to say this, besides one of the books that I'm going to mention, all of these books were viewer recommendations, okay? I've said this before, but I'll reiterate it. When I have readathons, I try to use only viewer recommended books because you know those are hard for me to get to these days between Patreon reads, book Hub reads, new arcs, it's hard for me to get to my viewer recommendation form, which if you don't know, the way that I take recommendations, because I know people like to leave them in the comments or they leave them on Instagram, I don't usually get your recommendation if you do it that way. But I have a book rec form, which is a Google form that just asks you the name of the book, the tropes in the book, and then you can either give me your name if you want a shout out or you don't have to, totally fine. Um, and you send it off to me. And so I have a document that has almost 600 viewer recommendations and their tropes. And so when I have something like this for the readathon, I go into this Google Doc that has all of these and I pull up my prompts and I say, oh, I need to read a captor captive romance. And so I control F and I type in captor and it tells me you have 17 of these that say captor in them. And then I go through and see which one I want to read. So just a little backstory of how I do that. Um, and if you want to leave me a recommendation, the form is down below. So please check that out. Um, and so all of these books I read, except for one, were viewer recommendations. So that being said, I didn't have the best time with some of these. So just be prepared if you see it. I won't be doing shout outs for most of these because I'm also not about like bashing someone's favorite thing. But it was an up and down ride. Let's say that. Okay, here we go. Claimed by the Orc Prince by Lionel Hart. This was, this is the first in a trilogy that is a gay arranged marriage between an Orc Prince and a Fey Prince. And they're trying to make a alliance. And so, yeah, so they get married at the beginning of this. The orc prince is, it's very like awkward in the beginning for two of them. They don't consummate their relationship right away. But the way that you get married in this world is you, this like bond is created so you can feel the other person's feelings. So it's actually like kind of helpful because they're having this awkward moment, but they can feel the other person's attraction. So they know that this person is attracted to them and it helps give them confidence to kind of move forward. So this was a very like quiet romance in a way and it is the beginning of a trilogy so there was a cliffhanger to this so this was really just them starting to get to know each other there's some really like beautiful sex scenes together and we find out that this fantasy series does have the potential to have like m preg in it because they talk about how there's like a spell they can do that like the prince would be able to have a child if they want that so there wasn't any of that like happening in this one, but I assume it will happen in a later one. I mentioned that because as I've shared, like M Preg is not my favorite thing, but I do want to continue this trilogy. And I also like that this was own voices. Lionel is a part of the gay community himself. So that was really cool. I actually don't read too many gay romances that are by gay authors, which I know, I know. It's a lack, we understand, but this was exciting because it was, okay? This one was. And yeah, it was just, it was soft. The, I gave this one three and a half stars though, because it was very slow and pretty boring. And I wish that this just hadn't been like, like it was 160 pages and it felt like it was twice that because it was very slow moving. And then a bunch happened in the last 10% and then it was done. Um, and since I didn't have time to just continue with the next book because I'm doing a readathon, that kind of held me back. So this was three and a half stars and it was a two and a half on the spice scale. And there was a trigger warning for um, death of a horse in battle. I just want to warn you. Okay. This horse is a hero and it also had a hero's burial. But I just want to tell you if you're sensitive <laughs> to be prepared for this beautiful horse to die at the end. 
Then I read A Little Quickie by Alexa Riley. I read Taking What's Mine. This is the first in the fourth submission series, which you will have to find on Eden Books if you want it. Um, it's not available on Amazon. Most of Alexa Riley's books aren't. Eden Books is a independent, sexy romance bookseller. It was started by Kay Webster to have her like taboo books on it, and there are a bunch out there. Um, and Alexa Riley writes a lot of very smutty, very taboo um, short like shorts. And so I got this in a bundle with three that are all forced submission, but these forced submission are actually CNC. So you will fully think that this person's being raped, but it's all rape fantasy, so just know that. Um, but yeah, Taking What's Mine was just a quickie. The tropes are taboo, captor captive, um, they're really kinky, and then also the hero is a police officer. So the, the hero, he pulls over the heroine, um, and she's a teacher, and he immediately begins assaulting her, and then uh, ties her up and takes her to a cabin in the woods where he breeds her, um, chases after her, there's some primal play, and then we find out how it's a CNC. So, if you want rape fantasy, but it's actually fantasy, it's CNC, this series will be for you. Um, it, it's very hot, very fun. So, this was actually four star for me because when I'm reading an Alexa Riley, I'm not expecting anything else out of it, okay? Like, I'm not expecting anything else. They're like 60 pages and 90% erotic like they're erotic so there we go so this was four stars and it was four on the spice scale and yeah breeding cnc in a kidnapping scenario okay then i read my first qb tyler of the week i read first semester this is book one in campus tales this is a little novella this is a student and teacher but first they have a one night stand don't know their student teacher and then they run into each other the first day and he's very pissed about it and she's shocked that it's her teacher um, this is a case of like, I was expecting more out of this. This one was also basically erotica, but also characters that were extremely immature. Her, I understand being immature. Him screaming at her in her face saying she's a liar and she tricked him when like they literally both met on a hookup app and then hooked up. How? How? You know, I mean, she lies to say she's 22 instead of 19 because it is like a hookup app. But still, she didn't know he was her teacher, none of that. So this one I didn't have a great time with. Um, it was two and a half stars. It was a four on the spice scale. I still plan to read these ones, though. Now that I know more what to expect, maybe the next one won't be as disappointing to me. But that's okay. All right. Then I read The Dom Who Loved Me by Lexi Blake. This is like the third or fourth Lexi Blake that I've read. Um... Everyone's telling me this series gets better. However, there's literally like 62 books in this series because they have all these different subsets. Um, this one is an older woman. This one is a like the hero's kind of going undercover. Obviously, he's a dom. Um, the heroine is 40 and widowed and she is an assistant for this guy. And the company that she works with is the one that Sean is like going undercover to try to figure out some stuff that's going on and he can tell that she seems submissive and would be into it and so they start having a uh, dom sub relationship but the hero uh, I don't want to spoil anything I don't want to spoil anything because I'm not mad enough about it and again, I go into it in the vlog so you can see more about it. But I did not appreciate how the hero acted or the way that he escalated their BDSM relationship when things weren't going his way. I was pretty icked out by his behavior in that regard and it didn't leave me feeling too good towards him. Uh, yeah, so I gave this one three stars and it was a four on the spice scale. Then I read Go Deep by Rosie Adams. This one was another quickie. I picked a lot of quickies. I did stuff my TBR with a lot of short books to just keep me moving because sometimes in readathons I get stuck on one book and then I never get anywhere and I didn't want that to happen with these ones. So I like pushed myself through. We were going. It, we were going, you know. <clears throat> so this one is a Friends to Lovers erotic novella. I mean, actually I wouldn't call it that erotic. 
it wasn't as erotic as I was expecting it was going to be actually. But our heroine is an author and her reviews have not been that good because they haven't been as inspired as normal. So she asks her friend Xander to help inspire her and he's like, you need some mentor dick? <laughs> So they end up having some spicy fun together and they were very sweet. They were very sweet. And like there is like a follow up novella to this and there actually is a second book that is like a full length book that is about Nevaeh's friend and I downloaded it. I'm pretty interested in reading it once I have some time, which I don't know when it will be. Um, but yeah. So I gave this one four stars though, because it did get, like it did give me what I want, but it was only two and a half on the spice scale. It wasn't as much as I was expecting. All right, then we have the book I'm here that I rant about for 15 minutes in my video. I really disliked it a lot, um, and that is Devil's Pawn by Natasha Knight. Um, this is the first in a duet. I will not be reading the second half. This hero, there's no way in fucking hell that he can redeem himself from what he did in this book. And I'm getting kind of exhausted, like kind of exhausted of reading heroes that are this much of an asshole. And then I'm supposed to love them because they have good dick game. No, no. Um, I mean, this is the same issue that I had with Rafe from the uh, series by Adelaide Forrest that I won't be finishing, even though like I love a lot of stuff by that author that type of hero that she wrote, I hated it. And that's the same kind of guy that Jericho was. This one has a forced marriage. There's revenge wanted between the two families. And so he enacts this thing called like the right where he's allowed to claim the heroine whose name is Isabella. And he's a single dad. Um, his fiance was killed and he wants revenge for that. And so he does this right. So she gets taken prisoner in his home and then eventually gets forced to marry him. And the things that are done on this forced marriage day were so despicable to me that I was done. Like I was immediately, I was done with him before, but I was really done with him during that ceremony. There are some things that get done to her that are just, I'm so angry about it okay like doing the most disgusting things that you can and making it erotic isn't romantic to me in any way shape or form this was disgusting and I finished that book on rage fumes alone okay I did and the reason I got two stars instead of like one is because so he's a single dad I don't care anything about him being the father I love the little girl and the relationship she was forming with Isabella. And I also liked the mom um, of like, not the mom of the little girl, like the mother of the hero, who I don't know how she spawned such an evil, disgusting bastard as her son is, because she was a relatively like, obviously she's a bit, you know, brainwashed into their world to a certain degree, but she's very kind to Isabella. And I liked that about her. And, but the thing is, is any time Isabel had sweet moments with the little girl, just being kind to this little girl who she, you know, doesn't have to be kind to. She could ignore this little girl and just be like, you are the daughter of like, whatever. I don't care if you're my stepdaughter. I don't want to be around. And the hero gets angry that the heroine is being nice because he's like, oh. She's trying to get in my good graces by being nice to my daughter. And so he literally sexually punishes her, which of course she comes like a geyser from it. Of course she does. But he sexually punishes her for her being kind to this little girl. And I'm over it. Anyway, like I said, I ran for 15 minutes in my vlog. So that'll be fun. Um, specifically in the vlog too, I talk about like what it is I'm looking for in a dark romance. And like, I know I like some crazy ones. I know I do. And so I understand. And I'm never mad when people recommend a book. And I'm never mad if someone will like this because I like some crazy shit. I understand. But something that happens too over time is that the wow factor of it isn't what I'm looking for. Like, I'm not looking for the hero to be the most despicable that he can be. Okay. Um, I just need there to be more nuance than that. Like, 
yeah, it just was badly done. And yes, so the, uh, okay. So I gave this two stars. It did have a four on the spice scale. The trigger warnings for me, assault, dubious consent, um, but also rape, um, forced tattooing, primal kink, bleeding, forced pregnancy, um, and that's the biggest one. Forced pregnancy is the cliffhanger of this book because he switched out her birth control, okay? That's what he did. Now, I've read that before, and I didn't hate it as much as I hated it in this. And I can't tell you, like, the reasoning for it. But part of the reasoning for it is that the forced pregnancy in this one is a revenge thing. Whereas the forced pregnancy in the one I've read before with it, it's a literally because the hero loves the heroine so much and he knows how good of a mother she'll be. So, like, he takes it, you know, I'm not saying either are good. They're both are dark romance. They both have reasonings. But the hero's reasoning of, like, he needs the heir so he can take everything from her. Not planning to let her be a part of the kid's life is despicable to me. Okay, so like there are different, same like thing, but one is literally mor morally bankrupt and despicable to me where one is like, that's messed up, but also it was twisted, cute, sweet. Cause like he knows what a great mom she'll be. So he wants them to have a baby. <laughs> like, anyway whatever. I hated it. I hated it. Goodbye. All right. Now I have one to gush about. Okay. I have a six star book. So after I read that one, you know, which I hadn't had super great luck. I'd had a couple four stars, but the four stars were mostly like erotic romance and things just weren't working for me. It was rough. I have a lot of arcs sitting on my tablet, like so much so that it makes me anxious. Like I could break out in hives and they're all books I'm excited for, but it's also... I'm a mood reader and when I have so many arcs that like have a timeline, it gets stressful. But I needed a break. I was like, you know what? I want to read an author that I know that I love them and I wasn't quite ready to read the Kennedy Ryan because I also wasn't quite ready for an emotional like tornado, which is what Kennedy Ryan is. Um, and so I picked up Sweet Like Poison by Jay Wolf. This is the third book in her Savage You trilogy. Um, and I've had ups and downs with Jay Wolf, but overall she writes new adult romance that I like. I haven't liked some of the plots that she's done in hers, you know, but I love her writing style and she writes just, oh, her characters just speak to me. And this, this is the best one of hers that I've read. Now, immediately people are gonna ask, can you read just this book? You can check out my Goodreads review. I go into great detail about this. Of course, you can always just read a book. And when I tell you about this book, maybe you will just want to read this book. And, you know, I recommend you do that. I want you to read Jay Wolf's books. But I hope that after you read it and you, like, see some of all the other characters, because, you know, this is the ending of basically two series, because first there was the Savage... Um, savage crew which was high school and then there was a savage you which was college but they're all the same characters through these series right it's like when you went from like the off-campus series to the briar you series right by l kennedy kind of like that and i hope that when you read sweet like poison you'll be intrigued by the other characters specifically by elena and want to go back and read her beginning because elena is a character that you have a lot of feelings about throughout the series you know she seems like a mean girl at one point she seems like a, a bitchy girl at one point she seems like a victim at another point like there are all these different sides to elena and when we come across her now she is a rich girl she does come from money that doesn't mean her family's perfect um, her father owns a bunch of rental properties around the area and she's actually the property manager. She's taken on that responsibility. So she does like maintenance on some of her like rental properties and it's before the school year is going to start and the hero, his name is Lachlan, he is actually from Wyoming where his family owns a ranch and he's going to school in California because once he gets his business degree or whatever his degrees are, he's going to go back to Wyoming. So He's a junior, she's a junior, they're not like, he's a big gruff, this is actually a husky hero. I wouldn't call him a plus size hero, but he's very big and he's multiple times described as like soft belly, but he's like, he's tough. He's a farm boy, okay? So, you know, maybe think of Rip Wheeler, 
that's what I was thinking of and I'll tell you even more why but if you watch Yellowstone you know that man is big and strong but it's not like he has six-pack abs doesn't mean he's ugly but he's farm boy body type and I like it too because Elena she's 5'9 he's like 6'3 mm, I love it as a 5'10 girl myself I love when my heroine is tall because they're always like dainty or whatever but anyway this starts out with her she's having a like issue with um getting a deck built the people that she hired to do it were a bunch of misogynistic pigs and so she fired them and so she's gonna try to build this deck herself and Lachlan is like it is literally painful to watch you trying to do this let me build this deck for you and so they have this where over the next week he stops by when he's not working and builds this deck and she will sit out on her deck in pajamas and read the paper while he is doing it. And he's always like, you need to put on more clothes. And it feels, you know, you're like, why is he telling her? And she's like, why is he telling me what to do? But it's really him being like, he wants her to be safe. And she's like, why can't they control themselves? And he's like, they should, but people don't, you know, so cover your... I don't know. I thought it was cute. Also, he calls her Elsa, even though her name is Elena. And she thinks it's because he's just purposely forgetting her name like people do. But it's because she looks like Elsa and he calls her the, the ice queen because she has this long, beautiful hair. Anyway, I can't go through the whole details, Jen. Keep going. Keep going. But anyway, after he's finished building this deck, they end up having like a weekend fling. OK, um, they have sex once at her place and then they have sex at his place and they have sex like five or six times over this weekend and then their friends are coming back and so Lachlan is like so we're gonna be done now and she's like what because the secret of Elena is that she was raped by her high school boyfriend before she went away to school um and she hasn't been able to come since he did that like she just she hasn't she has had no sexual desire for anyone um like doesn't mean she hasn't had sex with people but it hasn't been great for her you know and Lachlan just he works for her like he just works for her and she doesn't tell him that and he just assumes that you know, whatever. We had sex and I don't want to be in a relationship with anyone. Um, I don't want it to be serious. I'm not staying in California, like whatever. And so she's all like, oh, fine. Yep. We're not together. Meanwhile, she's secretly devastated and they actually have a class together. So they end up seeing each other um, and they're just drawn together. And really this book, like I, again, I go over this a lot more in the vlog so I'm still taking so much time to talk about it but I know I'm doing a paltry job of explaining this and I feel like my Goodreads review explains it better because like I don't want to spoil this yet it's not out but when I said that I had Yellowstone vibes let me explain those parts do I think Elena is as intense and mean and like badass as Beth no but in the way that like Beth, she has a soft underbelly, okay? She does. She has things that pain her when they come up and she tends to lash out when people poke at them. But something about Rip will very much calm her down and will get her to spill secrets. And then he will be very protective and also be baffled by her, but find her to be perfect. You know, like there's that dynamic. And like Lachlan, He's definitely very like trying so hard to be aloof to her and have this only be physical, but there's just something about them that draws them together so tight. And his big reticence to stay away from her and not get in deeper is that his parents, they had an issue over his mother, like his father postponed his dream of owning a ranch so that his mother could have her dream in California and they promised each other 20 years and then they would do what he wanted and the mother never did that and so they broke up and it tore up their family and Lachlan doesn't want to do that like he doesn't want to fall for someone who's a city girl when he's going to be a country boy so it's a bit of a paltry excuse but the way that Julia Wolf makes you believe it like I understood what he was doing and also Elena she just wants someone she can trust and she feels like Lachlan is that person but he's holding that bit of distance because 
he's trying to make space. So anyway, I'm not going to go any further into it. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I know that doesn't seem like a six star review what I just gave, but the amount of satisfaction in the epilogue of this book and the beauty between these two and the way that they're so mature, but yet like can't stay away from each other the sex is so amazing it's gut-wrenching the way they slowly share parts of their hearts with each other the way that they alternately stand up and protect each other um it's so great and Lachlan is a hero that I don't read very often outside of a straight-up cowboy romance so to have the because this isn't a cowboy romance but he has the dignity and the calm of that serious cowboy man that I love in a college student and I love it okay I love it because I I did know young men when I was young from where I live who were like that who were already men they weren't boys like they were men and they treated women with respect and they lived with respect and they worked hard at 22 you know anyway I'm done I'm moving on loved it six star book I adored it so I highly recommend you start with Start a Fire, which was also like a five, six star book for me and read through all of these books. Or you can just read Sweet Like Poison and then maybe you'll be intrigued to read the rest. It's up to you. Six stars, four on the spice scale. Um, and there is uh, trigger warnings for previous assault, mental health treatment, loss of multiple pregnancies by a side character and PTSD. All right, then there was The Danger You Know by Lily White. This was a stalker and assassin romance. There was also cheating in this book, but I did not mind because it was cheating on an abusive husband, and y'all know I don't care too much about that. My morality stops there. But this book, we have Ari, who is an assassin. He takes a hit, uh, and this hit is killing Adelaide's father. And she's 16 years old when her father is killed, and he watches her. She's actually the one who finds the body. She has like a mental breakdown. And he stalks her for the next seven years. And as he stalks her, he does interact with her life at different times. But she's, he's just really entra in, attracted and entranced by her. But he mostly stays away. He's 10 years older than her. But about five years into stalking her, she meets a man um, named Grant. I think his name is Grant and slowly he like woos her and she gets engaged and then she gets married and he you know he watches her through all of this and he decides to back off he's gonna give her to this man and he's gonna try to fade away but then he starts to notice some disturbing things she comes back from her three long month long honeymoon through europe and she just seems very defeated and quiet and small. And as he continues to watch, he sees that her new husband has slowly like squeezed the life out of her and he can't stand back anymore. And so he starts getting involved. And then this book goes places I was not expecting. So it was very interest interesting. I can't say that I like fully loved it, but this was crazy like it was not one I'd read before and it definitely gets very dark but it actually doesn't start out as dark even though yes it starts with him killing her father it doesn't really get dark until we find out more about this husband and like what he's doing and stuff so yeah there definitely is um trigger warnings for domestic abuse stalking and a little bit of dubious consent there's a little bit. This was four star and a four on the spice scale for me. Then I read Sweetest Sin by Sosie Frost. This was a priest romance. We have our heroine, Honor, and she has a mother who used to be a drug addict. She's trying to be sober, but she's still kind of fucked up a little bit. Um, and she's around this one church a lot and Father Rafe. And the book begins with her confessing to Father Rafe that she has some feelings for him that are inappropriate and they need to start staying away from each other and father Rafe has a very interesting ideas about how he wants to help her deal with her temptation and I'm honestly not going to dive into it because I don't care enough about this book to get into everything with it um I was pretty disappointed though I was intrigued by some of the ideas and like themes that the author was going with 
Because the hero, the way that he wants to help save her from sin is for them to confront their temptations. Whereas like honor, she's taking the biblical term of it of like, no, I'm going to flee from temptation. I need to spend less time with you. And he's like, no, we need to fully embrace our attraction so that when we resist it, we are triumphant over our feelings. And she's like, that's not going to go well if we keep tempting ourselves. But he's very stuck in his ways and it's going to lead to some debauchery. I'm just going to say that. So it was intriguing to try a different style of priest romance. And I do appreciate um, the viewer who sent this to me. But I don't think the way that Sosie Frost took it on is a way that I like. Um, but yeah, I, I did appreciate that the heroine pushed back against him for that. But it just got too yeah it just was too much so i gave that one three stars and it was a two and a half on the spice scale and the trigger warnings were a parent dealing with addiction loss of a parent which was before the story death grief and lots of religious themes so yeah then i read always been you by qb tyler this one was a much more enjoyable experience this was a four star book um it was a 4.5 on the spice scale because james and gab who there was lots of squirting in this book which i <laughs> love by the way there was a lot of books actually during this readathon that had squirting in them which isn't something you come across like all the time and then I feel like I find literally a gush of them <laughs> pardon my fun anyway <clears throat> this is a adopted sibling romance the hero is 13 years older than the heroine she's 18 and going to college he's 31 and lives in the same like town that she's going to school so they're going to be going back to the family for Christmas together and she has had a crush on him for years he's been attracted to her for a couple of years which it's taboo he obviously hadn't done anything about it but they get drunk together one night at his place and they end up doing it and all of their previous feelings they've had come out um yeah it's taboo it's supposed to be but yeah he's her adopted brother and they are we are going to make it happen no matter what and so this whole book is smut and it makes sense because this book actually used to be in like an anthology it was a novella so it was expanded and made into a full book which is beautiful i mean i love the book but i mean it's a, it's it's an erotic romance we'll just put it out there it's an erotic and it was hot it was good um yeah the trigger warning is they're adopted siblings there you go all right and then the last book that i finished for the readathon and for the week was charge by kate c wells this is the first book in her um this is the first book in her um motorcycle series and it wasn't that great for me but it did pull through to a certain degree for me it starts off rough with so Kayla is a 21 year old mother. She was a teen mom. Um, Charge, he just got out of a relationship that he'd had with a woman and it did not go well. He's feeling like off his game and kind of useless basically. And Kayla and her son, Jimmy, move in next door to Charge's dad, Pops. And Pops and Jimmy really take to each other. Charge sees her, gives her the nickname Peaches because she has a round booty. He constantly is commenting on her looks, but calls her barely legal pussy. And also, I don't want to get with no one who's anybody's mom. If a baby's been in there, I don't want to be there type of attitude, which is disgusting. And it lasts for a while. But then two things win this over. One, Kayla is a wonderful young mother and she is literally giving everything to making her son happy and to make sure he has a good life. And I love it. I literally, literally, it warms my heart. I love seeing it. And number two, once Charge starts to be won over by this little boy and her, he goes balls to the wall and it's really great. Like it's beautiful. There is some concern because Kayla has a father and a stepmother who they have taken her son away from her before. And she has certain things she's supposed to do to make sure she can keep her kid and hanging out with an ex-con and his biker buddies is probably not going to go over well with her family. But charge like I said he charges forward he makes it happen so this ended up being a three and a half star for me it was a two and a half on the spice scale it actually wasn't that spicy but um it was really beautiful how they're together the first time he's very understanding because that's the thing she's a 21 year old single mom because she was roofied at a party 
and she never even remembers the sexual encounter at all. Um, she didn't even know she was pregnant until five months along because she just had no idea and she never told anyone she was raped. And so, yeah. So she never had sex that she remembers. And something I very much loved is the first time they do have sex, she tells him, she's like, I wish you'd been my first. And he looks in her eyes and he says, I am your first. And damn right if that's not true. It was beautiful. So it won me over, but probably not enough to continue the series because I've heard it doesn't necessarily get better. So I might not be continuing, but this was much better than I was assuming when I started the night off, uh, when I started the book off. And I'm happy that I finished it because I love like found family and this was chock full of found family goodness, just the whole biker crew. So yeah, um, the trigger warnings were previous assault and then in my opinion, bad parental relations. Like they were so bad, it was triggering to me. So there's that. All right, there we go. Those are the 13 books that I read this week. If you want to know more in depth about some of these books, like I said, I will have the vlog going up on Monday. So definitely check that out. Thank you so much to those of you who are supporting me here and helping me do this full time. Thank you for watching this, by the way. I hope you like the video and subscribe to my channel. And yeah, I'll see you in the next videos, y'all. Bye.